on everybody live from 73 here what's going on i'm still out in this mug i'm still doing it i'm still at it i'm here to tell you guys today exactly what the title say if you don't do nothing you ain't gonna learn nothing it's only until you start trying to put forth some effort into whatever it is you're trying to do see everybody everybody keep thinking money is going to, for instance, for instance, you'll buy a, a treadmill in, in hopes to lose weight, right? But everybody throw money at these tools like it's going to magically shed the weight off of you. Like we'll buy a whole gym set, treadmill, all this stuff, because everybody is about to do that in a minute, in about 30 days or so, a couple weeks. When they resolution, you're going to throw a whole bunch of money at all this, at all this stuff with the intentions. You got good intentions of bettering yourself, doing better, right? Learning something, but you won't do it. You think the money is going to make you lose weight. You threw money, you threw $4,000 at this high expensive treadmill and you just automatically think, that you're going to lose weight because you bought a $4,000. You think the more money you throw at the situation, it should make it easier for you. It don't work that way. I want to say hello to everybody. Welcome to the Greenhouse Cafe. Hey, Gigi's Natural. Hey, Wine Lions. Uh, old uh, McMoney, uh Golden Butterfly, Miss V, Brenda Baker, Garden with Bear Brown, Super Farms. How y'all doing? Listen, I've been out here almost every day. I only spent one night out here. I only spent, hey, uh, Nessa, only, only spent one night out here. But every day I wake up, I come back out here and I learn more. I'm out here all day, every day. And I know some of my neighbors watch me and they see me and we've spoke about it. And I'm telling you, I've been out here and they can prove it all day from sun up to sundown, literally past sundown. It's days that I don't even go in till maybe two, three in the morning. Messing around with y'all. I'm gonna tell you what I've learned. Number one, can y'all hear that? Hey, don't hurt the harvest. Y'all hear that motor? What's up, DC? Uh, Kathy Sales, Missing UK. Hey, can, can y'all hear, uh, y'all hear the motor? I'm gonna tell you what that is. This is a question that I should be answering on my other channel, on Hood Tech 73. Can you charge your solar generators with a gas generator? It sounds like a no brainer, but some people just don't know. Guess what? Hey, everything fresh and sassy. Hey, uh, Grammy's Journal and Cedric Edwards. Earl J, what's up? She is sunshine. I'm charging my Van Powers uh, Super Pro 2000 watt generator because it's been out here for four days. It's, if you live in South Carolina, I'm going to say Georgia. I'm going to say probably some of Florida. I know all of the north and northeast is, is whipped. We've been getting heavy rain every day for four days. Ever since the last video I did. Every day for four days. All day, all night. With very few breaks. With very few breaks. It'll stop. And you will think it's okay. Even the sun will come out a little bit. And then it'll hammer us again. Earl J said, y'all got overcast. We, we got it right now. And that's why I'm, I'm back out here. I wanted to tell y'all this tent. I don't think I'll ever go back to using a nylon tent again, unless it's just because I'm just going to be somewhere for a, a, a day or a night or so. It's been, it's been pouring so bad, it flooded. The water, I had to move my solar panels. My solar panels out by the water, right? Out here. 
it flooded, I had to go get my solar panels out of the water. So I did a little video of that, but I ain't released it. I had to go get fish my solar panels out of the lake. So it's flooded around me. And inside, we I got a little bit of water. Uh, can you stand up straight in that tent? I can't even reach the top of this tent. This tent is 10 feet tall. So, yes. I did a whole video on it. <laughs> yeah. It's 10 feet tall. It's 20 feet long and 13 feet wide. So, my whole family had a birthday party in here. So, this is what I want to tell you. I I thought that I should have sprayed it first. Remember, everybody said, did you spray it with your silicone spray? If you don't spray a nylon tent, you going to get wet. If you don't spray a nylon tent and you got rains like we just had in the last four days, you're going to get wet. Can you believe it's little things of water here, there, here, there. And I brought a mop out today because it rained so bad last night that I'm like, I know I'm going to go out there to a river. I'm, I'm already pulling the solar panels out of the lake. I come in here. I could have wiped this stuff. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to show you what I wiped it up with. I wiped up the water with this. That's how much water was in here. Just this. I could not believe it. I just could not believe it. So, it's dry as a bone in here. And y'all know how I've been raining. I, I ain't no exception. I'm in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm in Columbia. Hey, Carbon Q. Good to see you, sis. That's it. So I'm I'm blown away. And I've been testing this thing. I'm not taking it down till after the holiday. Because you can't put this back moist, damp, wet, nothing. It got to be completely, totally, utterly, fully dry. Now, I'm going to tell you something else I learned. How many people are in the market for a solar power generator? How many people looking for a solar power generator right now? Put your hands up, spell hand. I don't care what you do. Put a thumb up, whatever you got to do. How many people looking for that solar power generator? She is sunshine. You said you got one basically, right? I might, I might have to change your mind a little bit. Okay. This is what I found. You may have a solar power generator. Let, let me just show you fast. I brought two of these out here just because, just because, Jackery 500, Jackery 240. I brought both of these out here. I'm going to say this. If you are in a situation where there is no lights, your lights went out. Our lights went out for two hours this morning in the house. If you're in a situation, hey, uh, New Orleans Gardener, if you're in a situation where your lights went out and they're going to be out, you might be in some trouble with these. I'm going to tell you why. Are these awesome? Yes, they are. In a real grid down situation everything changes everything changes now and i'm living it right now i'm telling you it's changing you ain't gonna want to hear this because you probably bought something similar you need something let me turn this fan off you need something more like this eco flow delta 1800 I'm going to tell you why. You need something more like this. It's going to give you about at least a thousand watts. At least a thousand watts. Okay. Depending on what you're doing. I'm going to tell you why. This van powers. I'm going to show you all the video on that. I have several videos of several things that I'm going to rehash and bring back up because of this situation because they are fast charging if there is no sun out i got a solar power on this van powers and it was only with this overcast only bringing in 36 watts listen to me real close 
I have a 400 watt solar panel on it. And it's only bringing in 36 watts. That's how cloudy it was. Okay? With rain and cloud, I'm only bringing in 36 watts from a 400 watt solar panel. Now, I got 30 watts going out for my refrigerator freezer. I got another 14, 15 watts going out for my Wi-Fi. And what else did I have plugged in there? And that's it. Now you do the math on that. Every hour it's drinking that up. And all I'm replenishing is 35 watts. So my refrigerator keeps cutting off because there's no power to replenish it. Uh, so I'm telling you, you need a fast charging device that's going to charge up really fast. From something like your gas powered generator. Or if that sun happens to come out and stay out for maybe an hour or so, two hours, that 400 watt solar panel is going to kick in overdrive and probably give you about 50% of your power back before the rain comes back. Uh, so there you go. All right. I, I'm, I'm just letting y'all know a couple things that I'm finding. Number two, let me put some more wood on the grill. Let me just look, I'm gonna take you with me. As far as this stove, it's a beast. It's a beast. Doggone it, I can't, I can't lie about that. But I'm gonna tell you this, in reality, in reality, I've been living out here in reality. I need one maybe a little bigger if I'm really truly living in reality. This is cute. It works and it heats up this whole tent. But you ain't going to get no sleep. Keep on filling this up. Trust me, I'm living it right now. Number two, everybody was asking me, Led, where's your fan? I told y'all it was late because of the holiday. This is that thermal fan. And when I tell you, I don't, you don't, don't buy a wood burning stove without that fan. Don't damn do it. Don't do it. Without it, you're going to lose so much heat because your heat going to go straight up, go up through here. And this is breathable. So that heat is going to, you're going to lose that heat right here. Now I'm going to tell y'all, let me, let me get it up. Okay, all I'm dropping is knowledge today. I'm dropping mad knowledge. So you're, you're gonna lose heat because canvas is breathable. Air is going out, ain't too much coming back in. So your heat, I was standing outside the tent on the way in the other night and I looked back at the tent and I could see the tent because it was warm in here. I could see the tent smoking. The steam from the warmth that's coming off the tent. That means I'm losing heat, right? So now, with this fan, I step out. Same temperature outside. It was around 30, 37 degrees. It ain't smoking like it was the other day. Because that fan is whipping this straight across over here. I'm going to show you something else. I got a thermometer right here. It's 63 degrees in here, right? 63 degrees over here by the stove. And I got a thermometer all the way across the room. Stick with me. This is important because a lot of people are getting snowed in. And it's only two degrees. This is off by one degree. They, they're both off by one degree. So we're going to call that 62 degrees over here. 20 feet away. Before that, the temperature was like five, five degree difference before I put that fan on there. Right? Okay. That fan is working its little tail off. So I don't have to use none of my solar power to run this little fan up here. 
Because that's what I was doing. And that's just drinking juice. So. Here's another hack. Please, please. I, I know. Please watch this video again and write it down. Because what I'm telling you gonna, will, will probably save your life. Uh, African Dreaming, what's going on, family? If you buy one of these stoves, uh, lead indoor bathroom is amazing. Oh, thank you for the, thank you for that. Uh, I got some. I got a hack to tell you about that too. I'm gonna show you in my thumbnail. I'm holding my axe, my hatchet, and I'm holding my sawzall. You will wonder what the hell do I have this for? Out at camp, why do I have this? And all you should need is this. I'm going to show you something else I got. I started out with this. Why do I have my circular saw instead of just this? Because this is a wood stove. And it's only, I think it, this one is, I, I'm going to measure it. Hold on. I forgot I took my tape measure with me. Hold on. Okay, this stove is 14 and a half inches long. This stove is 14 and a half inches long. All of them on Amazon are, unless you pay that extra money for one of the bigger ones, right? 14 and a half inches long. Anybody that cuts wood usually cuts a, a I just had one too. They, if you cut wood, if you buy already cut wood, say like from Publix, those logs are going to be anywhere from 18 to 24 inches long. So you got a two foot piece of wood that you're trying to stuff in that stove. It's not going to fit. You're going to leave the door open. It will work. But now you got a danger problem because if that burns all the way through and that one piece of wood fall off and hit the floor of this tent, you got a problem. Number one. Number two. It's going to be it's going to be so smoky in here you ain't going to be able to breathe. You're going to be just wanting to get out. So, instead of me going out there and using my let, let me show you. I got several several different kind of saws. Here's my my big boy silky saw. This is why I didn't use this because you could have used this. Why didn't I use this? Okay. Because I'm like, listen, in a real life situation, which I'm experiencing now, man, your energy is everything. Your energy sitting there, huh, huh, humping that thing back and forth. I did a couple of them and I'm look back and I got a pile of wood. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to saw all of this. And, and be okay. I'm, I'm, I'm burning too much energy. Number one. Number two. If I do this all decombobulated and everything else. Guess what? I got to do that outdoors. Because this is definitely going to tear my tent. Because it's, it's not a control cut. I'm backing up. I'm going back and forth. Going back. It's not a control cut. You're going to be all. This going to be all in the ground and everything. With this Saza. You set that sucker on another piece of wood, plug this into your solar power generator or your gas generator. You set this on another piece of wood or a brick or whatever you got in your tent and you can sit here while it's pouring raining, which I did, and sit there and cut each one down to size. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like. All of these were double as long. All of this wood was double the size. Double the length. They wouldn't fit in my stove. But now look. See that? They go right in there. Now all I got to do is set them on a brick. Thing in. Oh. 
All I gotta do is set it on a brick. Now I got a control cut. It don't even gotta be this big. Maybe I don't need to burn so, so fast. Take my hammer. Now I'm doing this right inside my tent. I'm controlling my cut right inside my tent with no harm to my tent. No, I'm not outside getting wet. Nothing. So now I got the right size wood. I can work inside my tent without going outside for no reason, getting wet. That's what we're going to talk about next. Getting wet. When you out here, you get wet. You ain't no going in the house. This is your house. So what do you do when you get wet? You got to take them clothes off. Wet clothes will kill you. Wet cotton is going to kill you. Look at this. Now I done dried one towel. This was soaking wet. This wood burning stove and this fan is the MF and truth. You heard me? Look here. Dry as a bone now. I just put this on here a few minutes before this video started. Dry as a bone. You sit there and you use them brackets to help dry that towel. This is my floor towel I wipe stuff up with. And I had a piece of conduit in my uh in the chicken coop. And they couldn't use it because it's not long enough for my chicken coop. So I said, damn it, I need that. I'm going to just take this in the tent and I'm going to zip tie that right there. That gives me a cross member in, this, in these teepee tents. They don't got much to hang stuff on. This gives me a safe uh, cross member for hanging light stuff like your lights, drying your clothes, drying your towels. When you washing up and stuff like that, this is my washing towel. But here's the other thing. Um... It's, it's hotter up here, the heat rises, cold falls. So it's warmer up here, and the wind, I attach this fan to blow across my clothes, my socks, and my towels to help it dry. And it's warm up here, so I'm warming everything up and drying it with warm air. See, I'm doing this right now to show everybody. It's certain things that you could be doing a little slicker that you that ain't going to matter of fact I don't need either one of these jackeries that's a waste of space that's a waste of space I got two fast I got two fast charging generators that take up the space really of all the generators if you got one good fast charging generator solar generator and one good gas generator, your power problems are over. Right now, my Honda, I can go cut it off because let's go cut the Honda off. I'm gonna take you with me. And somebody was getting on me about my shoes. As you can see, I told you, I gotta put my outdoor boys on. Because if you track this crap through your tent, you're going to be spending more time cleaning your tent every five seconds than anything else. That's another waste of energy. Hold on. I'm going to show you all something else. I'm going to hurt the game. I'm going to show you. This answers another question. Leg, can you leave your solar generator outside? No. Can you leave your gas generator outside in the rain? No. This is why. Let me cut it off. I'm going to show you all my setup. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you now. Watch this. Got to use your head. Okay. I just got a plain old blue tarp over this set up but I'm gonna show you what it's on
That ain't number cattle panel. Short cattle panel. And I got a, a hook I bent. I bent over a hook and that's the only thing holding this together. And it kept it dry for four days. This comes right up, it's not permanent. You can pick this up and take it away or you can take this hook off right here. Let me show you. I'm gonna show you how simple this is. You can take this hook off. This ain't nothing but a, basically a hanger. It's just a piece of this cattle pan that I got that I just put on there. I just hooked it on so it don't fall through just like that and it locks in. That's all to it. And you make a little A-frame tent so it don't get wet and you put a tarp over it, and you could zip tie this to this so it don't blow away, but I hadn't had to do that yet. I'm just showing y'all a little bit of the game, that's all. That's all to it. All I'm trying to do is make sure my generator don't get wet. Like a downpour. And it just sit in its own little doghouse. And now that just saved you about $200 or $300. Hold on, let me flip this. That just saved you about $300 because what happens is, hold on. What happens is, you will mess around, changing my shoes, y'all, like Mr. Rogers. Okay. This is home sweet home. Ugh. Okay. Here we go. So I'm telling you, it's so many simple simple hacks like now my fire getting too hot here's another hack i forgot to tell you these little rings ain't crap i'm telling you these ain't worth the the, the metal they made them out of these little rings to uh change the vents because you trying to grab this ring i got a big old hand trying to reach up and grab that i burn myself every time I took a piece of hanger, as y'all can see, it's a lot of pieces of hanger around here. And I wrapped it around there. Now I can be way back here. This ain't never hot. And this is at 600 degrees. There go my thermometer. I'm almost hitting 700. You see my dirty towel smoking. All you do is take this, lift it. Now I can control that thing easy without worrying about burning myself. A little infection outdoors is a life threat while you in the house it ain't no big deal you go get a band-aid and some uh antibiotics and you good but if you stuck out here or you stuck in a bad situation that, that's a life-threatening problem little infection in the finger mess around take your whole life off so okay so that's it um the toilet, the toilet, that everybody was tripping on the toilet. Let me tell you something about that. People wanted to see how it worked. I'm going to show you how it worked. I ain't going to show you, I ain't going to show you the pudding. Okay, I'm going to just show you the activation. All right, uh, here we go. It's a trick to this. You're going to you mess up. Here's the pump. It pump water just like a real toilet. It's going to flood. Let me see if y'all can see that. Okay, okay. The water go around in a circle. You can fill it up. You know, if you're going to have brownies or logs, that's up to you. I don't know your body. So, it fill it up, right? Can y'all see the water in there? Just water. It's clean. All right. Now, here's the crazy part. This is how you flush it. By pulling this handle. You pull this out towards you. Don't just go yanking that because I'm telling you, this uh, this pudding water, 
will jump up in your face. Ask me how I know. Watch. I'm going to pull it fast and I'm going to show you. I'm Matter of fact, just watch. Just watch the water. Watch how it jump out. Did y'all see that? Water jumped up and out. I don't know if y'all could catch that good enough. I'm going to do it again. All it needs is a couple pumps. Kids be out here having too much fun. Okay. Now, this is how you pull it. You pull that sucker slow. And I'm going to let you see in there. You're going to see it burp, but real slow. See that? Let him go down slow. Then let that pudding drop. Don't. Oh, no. Don't pull that too fast. Don't. Don't pull that too fast. So, <laughs> you're going to be singing Swiss Miss Pudding Bars to yourself. Yeah. Don't pull that too fast. Because I know a lot of y'all purchased one of these. And some of y'all said you already got one. So, you already know what I'm talking about. That Swiss Miss Pudding Bar is going to be all in the pudding. Don't do it. Save yourself. Okay? So, um... It's other stuff too. It's something else I had to tell y'all. Get as many solar panels as you can or the biggest solar panel that you can. Little 50 watt solar panels is a waste of time. Uh, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money because it's not going to charge up anything, not even this Jackery 240 in the kind of time that you're going to need for actual, uh, I will fruity loop. Uh, pin a link for what? I'm going to pin a link for everything in a minute. I don't do nothing without zip ties. Oh, that sink. I'm going I'm to put the, the sink and the toilet combo. I'm, everything going to be in the link after I'm done. I, I didn't do it because I was like, let me stop. Let me stop. Uh, here's another one. Invest in some quality cookware. Uh, invest in some quality cookware. Because trying to scrape stuck on food off of stuff, if you got cast iron, if you have cast iron, take a sander. If you bought you some uh, 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 some large grill, some large cast iron, or you got any kind of cast iron cookware, take a sander and sand. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a little bit. Oh, I got, I got something even better. I got two things I can show you. This is this is large. It's just a hamburger thing, right? But look how porous that is. That's not smooth. You hear that? It's not smooth. If you reach in and, and feel your... They don't make them like they used to no more. Back in the day, you got your grandmama, your great-grandmama's cast iron... Them is smooth. That's why I don't nothing stick to them. These new ones, I don't. I do believe in large, but they're new stuff. You gotta come behind them and doctor on it. You gotta sand them smooth with sand and paper. Get your sand uh, palm sander and sand inside there. All of that inside your pots, your pans, whatever you're gonna be using. Cause I promise you, it's gonna stick. Now here's another brand that I got. It's just a little bitty Dutch oven, a little one. This is, I don't know what, this from Stan Sport. It's the worst. I haven't even used this. I won't use it because you can see how, look, at, look how you can see that even bump right there. I'm not using this because I know I spend more time cleaning this than cooking in it. So you can fix this, but you got to, you got to take some, some hard grit, rough grit sandpaper and sand this out before you try to cook in this or you ain't going to never use it again. I've had this for a year and I've never used it. That's why. Because I was like, I'm going to mess around and sand it someday. So, um, refrigeration is a must. I'm trying to, oh, 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 you said stainless, uh, cookware hat, uh, is a have to? Well, I'm going to say this. I've been using for a year now. I don't even know what brand this is. It's called Harden 
iodide, hardened, is iodized. And y'all keep seeing me use it on every video, whether I'm camping or I'm just messing around, I'm cooking something, hot iodized, right. Thank you, uh, Brooke. Hard iodized. I'm going to put it in the link below. Africa Dreaming, you know what it is, anodized, anodized, iodized, whatever. Y'all dig what I'm saying. That, I even use my camping cookware in the house now. I, I'm, I'm going to show you. This got a drawback to it. It's a Dutch oven. Hard iodized, anodized, whatever. Nothing sticks to this sucker. You see how I done roasted him in a year. I done tore his ass up. Campfires, stove top, it don't matter. I'm going to tell you the only drawback to this is this. Watch this. It's a Dutch oven. It ain't got no handle on it. Don't try to grab these. It ain't got no handle. But I don't I don't figure something out. They sell these in the campus section for exactly my problem. You put that on the side and you clamping, you got you a handle just like a normal pot. And I've been using this like, oh, this how they do it. Because this, you be stirring stuff, you will knock this over off of a wood burning stove. It ain't enough room on there. This is how you do it. I done fixed I done fixed the whole operation. So I'm gonna leave that and I promise you that mug does not stick ever. Ever. And if you think it's gonna start sticking, drop a little bit of uh warm water in it after you done cooking. While it's still hot, watch all of it just come off. So the cooking. Now, here's one more thing. I, I told you I'm dropping pure knowledge this morning of my four-day excursion. Here's another one. Your wood-burning stove. The pros and the cons of a wood-burning stove. I don't care what size they are. I don't care if you get a big one or one this size. The pros and the cons. The pros, you got fuel all around you. You go outside and there's fuel all around you. There's wood everywhere. The con is you got to find dry wood or get a fire hot enough to start burning green wood, which is going to smoke like crazy. But you got fuel sources all around you. If you feel like spending energy going out looking for wood to bring back, now you got a problem. You got to go out there, get that wood, chop it up, chop it the right size, bring it back from wherever the hell you found it at, however you plan on toting it, Bring it all the way back. Now you can use it, right? I'm going to say this. The pros of that, you got energy everywhere. The cons is everything I mentioned. Here's the other con to that. If you run out of wood in the middle of the night, you got plenty of wood in your tent. But you better wake your butt up in the middle of the night and throw another shrimp on the barbie or you're going to be freezing. Now, I live in South Carolina. I can't imagine people in Colorado, okay, Michigan, camping. Now, we camped in the winter, but we didn't do no full long-term camping in that snow. That was a day trip. I can't imagine being out here for four days in Michigan, in Ohio, Illinois, Cincinnati. I can't even imagine it. Okay, all of that is, is unimaginable to me. So... What I did, and y'all know, I got that doggone buddy heater flex out here. Yeah, yeah. And, and when it comes to cooking, I didn't cook everything on, on my, uh, I didn't cook everything on my wood burning stove. You see my Colbin over there? It got to a point where I'm like, okay, it's not, co it's not cold in the tent. Do I want to burn my wood fuel that I've gathered and waste that energy just to make some hot dogs or something, right? Do I want to use my hard-earned energy that I went out and got this wood, I chopped it up. Do I just want to burn that, make it too hot in the tent or too hot outside or burn it outside while it's raining just to make a couple hot dogs, make me something to eat, make me some tea? No. 
that's where your propane kick in. You need another heating source. Don't just rely on your wood burning stove unless you that kind of gangster. If you that kind of gangster, I ain't got nothing to say. But the truth is, have two types of heating sources at the very bare minimum. I ain't talking about your sleeping arrangement because that's your clothing, your cover, whatever you sleeping in, and whether you sleeping on the floor or raised up. But the biggest thing is you need something else to cook with and something else that's going to heat your environment up because every piece of wood you burn, that's energy that's wasted just to make a hot dog. So I like, I've been just trying to cook and light this fire when it's time to warm this place up, which is when that, like this now, and when the, when it start getting dark, when it start getting cold, it's time to start cooking something because now I can kill two birds with one stone. If not, during a day like this, and let me see what it is outside. It's 46 degrees outside and it's 66 degrees in here. So I'm burning this wood now to help dry off my canvas. So I'm doing it for a reason. I'm not just burning it, you know, for no good reason. I'm trying to just dry this off because it's going to get a hit another storm tonight. And I want it. I don't want it already soaked after four days and then get pummeled again by rainwater. So it's all. It's the method is in the madness. It's all you got to work it and figure it out yourself. And once you out here, you start being like, OK, that's stupid. All right. Don't do that again. Uh, don't sit that there. If you don't figure this out, and this just ain't about tent camping. This just ain't about camping at all. This is about life. If you don't start getting your butt out of your house and off the couch, stop watching uh, uh, Lennon Housewives and stuff, and start figuring out how this this real world move. This listen, you we wonder why so some people rich, some people poor. Everybody ain't poor because they got bad circumstances. And everybody ain't rich because they got a silver spoon in their mouth. You got to start doing some of this stuff. Pay attention to them and look how they move. You got to start looking at how people that successful move. Watching them. How did he get that car? Some people, what we do is say, how did he get that car? How did he get that house? How did he get that fine woman? And then we be like, mm, oh, well, I'm going home. No, study that dude. Shake that man hand. How you doing, man? Nice car. Figure, start figuring stuff out, asking questions, and then apply the knowledge that you've learned. You can have all the knowledge in the world. Like I said earlier, right? You can have all the knowledge in the world on how to prep, everything. But if you don't use it and apply the knowledge that you've learned, you, you'd be better off doing nothing. You'd be better off doing nothing at all and sitting on the couch and watching uh, uh, Netflix for, for four days straight. You'd be better off Netflix and chill. I promise you. If you don't, it's a lot of people that's you they bought um pressure canners they've bought uh camping gear pot solar power generators gas generators all this gear for an emergency flashlights bug out bags and i guarantee you because i know because i get the emails that y'all i'ma say i'm gonna say 50%. I'm gonna, I'm not going to I ain't going to point fingers at everybody. I'm going to say if we just dealing with the emails, 70% of the emails that I get don't nobody have I mean nobody has used any of their equipment. 70% of the emails I get is asking me how to use something. Because they haven't even tried it on their own. And all I've been doing for 2 or 3 years is these type of videos. Nobody has even tried and they're waiting for the answers from the universe. 
And sometimes don't you ain't gonna get the answers from out in the universe. You gotta go out there and scrape your knee up a little bit. You gotta get out there and figure out how this thing works. Uh, here's 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 a, a a news bulletin. Read the damn book. Read the instruction manual. Every person I ask, when they ask me, did how does this work or how does that work or how do you do this? I said, did you read the book? Um, I was getting to that. Every last person, I, I, every last one, I ain't even lying. And y'all, is y'all watching me, so you know what you ask me. You know the conversation we had. Every time we have a little conversation, what'd you say? Well, I ain't got to that yet, lad. So I was just seeing if, stop always trying to get the cliff notes on life. Sometimes you got to go out there and scrape your dog on knuckles up a little bit so you will know don't do that no more. I'm telling you. So I'm going to say, if you don't do nothing, you will not learn nothing. Even listening is a doing action. Some people don't even want to listen. You know, even listening is doing a form of doing. And then apply that. I'm just saying, I don't come up with, I'm in here with all the stuff that I, I, I've i been telling everybody about. And I said, I'm going to really do this. I'm going to do this. I want to, I want to start smelling odd out in this mug and have to deal with it. I want to have to take a dump and be like, where am I going to put this at? Uh, Otis Willis, you scared? You scared of what? What you scared of? Uh, be Humble says, it's going to be my second uh, winter camping trip in January. All right. Come on with it. Come on with it. What's up, HVACR? Who that? Who I'll be happy to catch up on them name. How you doing, Harriet? Otis said, I have a way to build an electric system without using no gas or electric. What is you scared of then? If you doing all of that, what is you scared of? Like, and you know something else too? I'm going to say this, uh, Otis. Sometimes we can overcomplicate the simplest things. Do you really have to do that? I know you know how to do it. But do you really have to go that far? You know what I'm saying? Like what what are you, what is it did I just read something like you invented something, put it on YouTube? No you don't. If you invented something like what you just said, you know how to make electricity without making electricity or whatever. Hell no, I'm, I'm let me be the first one to tell you, don't put that on YouTube. That's our problem. Go get a patent. That's our problem. We quick to show everybody, look what I can do. And you didn't even patent your invention and guess who going to end up with it? I'm going to tell you a true story. I don't know if I ever told this before. Can I tell you a true story? About go get your patent first. And that's why I always do it now. Every time I come up with an invention. Or an idea. I go get a patent. I go and try and see if this has been done before. If it hasn't. I get a patent. For my invention. For my idea. So even if it comes up later and somebody else does it. I have a patent on it. That's going to pay me. And I can quit working at the post office. Listen to me. This is our problem here on social media. You think you done something first, which one, one thing, most things been done a bit. What's that saying? Uh, ain't nothing new under the sun. Billions and billions of times. But every blue moon, somebody come out with something a little bit unique. And you know what we do? We know what we do. We want to show the world how smart we are or clever we are. We put that ish on YouTube or Tic Tac or something like that. Now you got a billion people doing it. And then you say they stole my idea. No, they didn't. 
leading people along. You just were not, you were smart enough to make the invention, but you were not smart enough to keep it a freaking secret, go get a patent and make yourself rich. Or at least if not rich, well to do where you ain't never got to work again. See, I got burned once when I was young. I think I was like 20, 24, 25, somewhere around there. I was super young. I'm going to tell you a story that you will not believe. You're not going to believe this story, and I understand it because I get sick just talking about it. Has anybody ever seen that game? Uh, I don't know what it's called now. I know I called it Shots, but you can play checkers and chess on the the little um, checkerboard table, and you got shots. You got, well, we had round glasses and square glasses, shot glasses. And I'm going to tell you how that, that game was created, and I'm going to tell you all the way back, and those people can't say nothing because I did some stuff where if they ever try to get on me, they'll know the truth, and I can, they can't do nothing to me for talking about it. Listen to this. Me and my brother got off work. We worked in this factory with my father. My father was an engineer. We used to work third shift every day. Me and my brother would get off work and just hang out because we were so brain lost from working overnight in this smoky factory. My brother came over my house this day. Now, in my city, we had a place called Libby Glass. Libby Glass made everything, pretty much everything you buy from Walmart. And if it say Libby on it, it came from Toledo, Ohio. There's a factory called Libby Glass. So we used to go to the Libby Glass warehouse and buy stuff, you know, the little outlet, buy stuff. And I bought a glass checkerboard. Never seen nothing like that before. So I had this big old exquisite bar back then. And, you know, it was I had made, built it myself. I had that as a centerpiece. So me and my brother, one day he stayed over my house so long, we sit there and we woke up from work and you know we sitting at the bar and he take a shot and I had some square shot glasses from Libby Glass and some round ones so we sitting them on the board and I just put all the damn things on the board he put all the square ones on I put all the round ones on next thing you know long story short we like hey hey we need to come up with some rules for this this is fun now mind you we toasted, okay? We is effed up. But we, while we was getting toe up, we invented something incredible. So we bring a few friends over to play with us. And that's kind of, for, for weeks, we playing this game with friends and family to brush up on like, people like, you know what you should do? You should do this and that and make it so you just, if you do that, this, that happened. We made up rules like that. Me and my brother finally polished it off, wrote it all down, gave, brought the, um, what is it called? Your sample to, I'm going to name, the, should I name it? Because I know they changed their name. It's called, hold on, hold on. And y'all going to know who I'm talking about. It's a little caveman on the commercial and he pushing a rock and he hit it and turned it into a wheel. Innovation, creation, what the hell is they name? Anyway, prototype, thank you for that. This is what they did. I wish, the name gonna come to me and I'm gonna tell you. I brought in the prototype, brought in the paperwork, brought in the rules. They said, hmm, look like you got something there. We're going to check the patents for you. We're going to run everything down, everything. So my brother had to work. I went by myself. So I go show him. And guess what he said? You can leave it here. And I'm going to show the executives and everything. And, and I said, oh, oh, okay. We're going to be calling you. This is huge. Waiting on a call from this man. Remember, ain't no cell phones back then. None. Not even on Miami Vice yet. Damn, this mug ain't calling me. I'm calling him, calling him, calling him, calling him. I still got all the paperwork from that situation to prove my point. What the hell? I go back to this place. This dude, don't. he ain't even in that office no more. I wonder why. 
he probably got a promotion off my ass, right? So turn around, I finally get in touch with this dude. He said, yeah, yeah, um, we couldn't find nothing. Guess what he did? He gave me my stuff back. Paperwork, rules, regulations that we wrote up, prototype, everything. So let's just say a year, a year or two pass. My brother is with his girlfriend in the mall at uh, 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 Spencer's, at Spencer's. He go run to the payphone. Remember, cell phone still ain't out. He go run to the payphone in the mall, call me, cussing. Man, they stole our idea. Wait, 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 wait. I'm like, what, 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 what? And I'm thinking he's getting shot. Now, remember where we live, okay? What, 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 what? Man, you ain't gonna believe this. Now, if this was today's time, he could just snapshot a picture and send it to me. Can't. Come up to the mall right now, right now. Go to the mall. Meet me at Spencer's. Go, I go to Spencer's. What do I see in Spencer's? You know this place with the weird little gifts and stuff? You go into the freaking gift store. And he just, my brother just standing there. I don't know. He's so freaking mad. He pure, perfectly red. And I walk up to him. What's up? I'm thinking I'm about to go fight, you know, so I got I got one of them tools on me. Nope. He said, look at this shit, man. Here's the funny part. While we standing there looking at our creation, it was only a few left on the shelf, and we watched a couple of young teenagers take our game off the shelf. God is my witness. <laughs> Oh, oh, here's the, here's the other part. I think they had it priced for like $49.99 or something. So they're making 50 bucks a pop. And this whole end cap used to be full of them. To this very day, I, I get sick when every time I see a new rendition of it. Every freaking time I see, I don't even own one because I just, I, I'm that sick like, that's my million dollar lottery ticket that I gave away. I said, I'll never do that shit again. I have paperwork on a billion different things. Ideas, creations, I put some to work. But my other ideas, I don't let go. That's why I keep telling people, stop telling people you invented something and put it on YouTube. Now everybody copying you. What you're really saying is you're an idiot. I keep telling people that. You don't see me saying nothing about those doggone cement containers. None of the stuff I do. Nothing. Because if I'm sharing, damn it, I'm sharing. But if it's time to make some money, you'll never know about it until it's on your shelf. It's, listen, uh, Creative Beauties, it's, it's horrible that it happened. Uh, it's horrible that it happened. But in a way, thank God it did. That growed me up real fast. That means what I always tell y'all, everything ain't for you to. Lawyer can't do nothing about that. We did. Lawyer can't do nothing. Then you got to talk about. You got to retain a lawyer for no less than $5,000 and hope you win. But see, lawyer can't do nothing when you're stupid. Everybody think lawyers is this magic uh, unicorn. They're not. That's for super rich people where they can go and have lunch with the judge and stuff. Nah, I'm, I'm a poor blue collar worker. So I got to retain a doggone, what's the name, for $5,000. In the same time, thank you, uh, bro. At the same time, you know, there was times where our job was about to move to Mexico. So we was clutching onto our money like you wouldn't believe. So get it. Just show me. Uh, so here's the thing. It let me know. And I tell y'all all the time. Stop telling everybody everything on YouTube. <laughs> Some things don't belong on social media <clears throat> some things don't belong on social media <clears throat> so
Some things belong to you. And you'll run your mouth off, and next thing you know, you will see <coughs> another gardener. Mm. <coughs> Got something in there. Another gardener or another YouTuber doing or saying or whatever. <coughs> this is social media, not private media. This is not a private phone call. This is a freaking party line. You know what usually happen on party lines for me growing up? <coughs> mm. That dust. <coughs> this is just a new thing of that. That's all to it. <coughs> you know what happened in party lines? Somebody going to get their feelings hurt. <clears throat> Everybody in that party line shouldn't be on the party line. You might be friends with this person, but not friends with this person. You get on that party line, <clears throat> y'all start talking stuff about that person, but you don't realize <clears throat> that person is friends with the person you talk about. Party lines is dangerous. <clears throat> I hate them. Let me give me some more tea. I don't know what that was. <clears throat> it's probably in this damn tea. Ashes or something. <clears throat> Put a little another shrimp on the barbecue. <clears throat> that wood. That fire go. <clears throat> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm coughing like a bum. So, this is all I had to show you. I hope, I hope you get it. <coughs> it's right here. <coughs> Went down the wrong pipe. Look, that dropped a tear to your eye. <coughs> I'm glad it ain't happened in a store. Because <clears throat> I can't hear, stand to hear people cough in the store no more. I'll be like this. <coughs> All I hear is. <coughs> in my head, I'm thinking, you better take your ass home. You know the days we live in. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> That was probably about me talking about that, that guy that stole my stuff. <clears throat> but that's how that worked. Uh, <clears throat> Invent Listen, the place was called Invention Submission Corporation. Invention, Invention Submission Corporation. <clears throat> and one word did I miss. Submission. It meant something completely different. <clears throat> Invention Submission Corporation. I think it's submission. <clears throat> so, any questions before I go? <clears throat> I'm I'm definitely going on my other channel today <clears throat> because I have two generators, fast charging generators that I want to talk about. <clears throat> That's very important. Because I was able to save my tailbone in here and save my food with my generator by having a gas generator. <clears throat> I only ran it for like an hour, charged this 2,000 watts up in an hour and a half, something like that. I was able to run everything. <clears throat> that that's, means a lot. To be able to do that. Uh, Tracy Bumper said they was taking a lot of people's ideas. Hey, uh, Tracy, do you remember? <clears throat> do you remember if you know Submission Invention Submission Corporation? If you remember them, if you know who I'm talking about, <clears throat> they got sued and they end up having to change their name. What's up, Sunday? They had to change their name. <clears throat> Invention Submission Corporation got sued for exactly what I just told you. God is my witness. <clears throat> Uh, Otis Williams, yes I do. Uh, 
I do have a discount code on this tent. Wait till I redo this <clears throat> because they were so late sending it to me. I got I got the discount code for this tent last night. Okay? I got the discount code for this last night. So I'm going to put it up as <clears throat> soon as this video is over. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> you say, uh, say what is a patent? I'm gonna have you Google that, okay? <clears throat> What's up, Richard? Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for that. Broke farmer in the house. <clears throat> Mad cow in the house. See you. With all that's going on cough openly no it's rude anyway <clears throat> where will you put the discount code it's going to be in the description box and it's going to be in the first pinned comment say what weather has been uh <clears throat> say weather's been crazy and messing with my allergies so take care of yourself and that's what it kind of feel like like some allergy but i'm good <clears throat> i got stuff to do uh um, I'm going to be out here for the rest of the day. And what I want to do, I'm going to bring, I think I'm going to bring the generator out here <clears throat> so we can get a good look at it. I got one out here already, but we're going to get a look at the other one. I'm going to do an unboxing. So meet me on Hood Tech 73 later on today sometime. <clears throat> and I'm going to do that unboxing. I know sometimes you can't help but cough. Like now, nah, I know ain't nothing wrong with me. <coughs> it's just <coughs> hearing it makes you unsettled. <coughs> Let me see. Any questions, you guys, before I go? <coughs> hey, Britt Mai, say temperature already dropping. I have to cover some stuff up. I'm telling you. <clears throat> what is it out there now? It's it's 47. It's coming up a little bit. <clears throat> yes, I'm doing a camping in February. How do I find out? I'm waiting. Thank you, Carbon Q. I'm waiting on Lady Led. My wife has been so busy, y'all. <clears throat> she has been so busy holding things down and doing and and uh <clears throat> and handling stuff i promise you so i really been waiting on her because when i do announce it like legit announce it <clears throat> i really really want her sitting there because that man she know she know the little details and i don't want to leave nothing out <clears throat> say the negative 25 i missed something okay all right, y'all, I'm going to get off of here. But please, please, please listen to everything I said in this video. If you missed out on something, you might want to watch this one again because y'all know I kept it 100 up in here. You're going to find yourself in this situation. <clears throat> I hope you never have to. But you're going to find yourself in this situation and you're going to be trying to figure out what to do. <clears throat> People is getting evicted out of their houses. This ain't got nothing to do with the end of times. This ain't got nothing to do right now with uh, uh, apocalypse. No. Man, people is getting evicted. Normal people like me and you. They're changing laws and changing rules and, and uh, <clears throat> changing interest rates and all of this other crazy stuff. Firing people. Next thing you know, You'll be the person you see on the news. <clears throat> That's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm doing it. Because I, I feel that there's so many people. It, it's people that I even know that's going through it. And there's nothing they can do. It's like nothing they can do. But just. <clears throat> I don't want to see nobody sleep on a damn bus stop. I don't want to be driving around and I got a pocket full of money and see you on the bus stop. 
<clears throat> I don't want to even see if we in both the same situation. And I'm standing in this uh, Taj Mahal and you on some cardboard. I don't want to see that for my people. I think, <clears throat> like I said before, I promise you this. Start, stop watching bullshit and start paying attention to this knowledge. Knowledge is being thrown around <clears throat> like confetti and we missing it. My phone about to die and I got a generator sitting right here. Mm, no, I need to be kicked dead in the nuts. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> they throwing knowledge out here like confetti <clears throat> at a ticker tape parade. There it is. <clears throat> Whatever that is. <clears throat> I felt it. I probably sucked up a bug. I talked too much. <clears throat> Where would you put a tent if you kicked out? Ask yourself this. Where are you going to sleep if you don't have a tent and you get kicked out? That's a problem I don't even need, need, need to think about. <clears throat> and if you ask him where you going to put a tent if you get kicked out, <clears throat> means you don't travel very much. All you got to do is travel to any major city. And you will see tents under off the expressway. For you to ask that question, I'm just I'm keeping it real with you, okay? You ask me a question, I'm tell you what you what you ask. I'm answer for you. It let me know you ain't been nowhere. All you need to do is drive through one major city for about five minutes on their expressway, and you're going to see their rendition of Tent City. I don't. I'm not thinking about where I would put a tent. I'm thinking about, do I even got one or do I got to sleep out here with these night walkers or, or what they call them? Day walkers. <clears throat> <clears throat> do I got to be out here with these damn zombies? You have. This is exactly what I, I said and I meant it. Get your ass off the couch. And go experience life. Start putting yourself to the test. Start putting yourself through some measures. So you don't got to ask no questions like that no more because you done already seen it. And I'm telling you right now, <clears throat> everybody should have about two good tents in their garage. I don't care if you never use it now. You need two good tents in your house. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Brit My. <clears throat> everybody need at least two good four-man tents in their house. I promise you, even if you don't need it, you will run into somebody that may. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to say this. <clears throat> Working at the post office, I always carry my bug out bag with me. Everybody, all my friends, and they probably watching me right now, ask me, Man, what the hell you got all in that bag? All we doing is delivering mail. All you really need to bring is your lunch. Right? It was a lot of workers. They don't bring no bag with them. <clears throat> they live off the street. Meaning, you want to eat, you stop at a restaurant on your route. You got to pee, you stop at somewhere on your route. Whatever you got to do, you stop at somewhere on your route. And that's how you function. Not me. In my head, I was always like, if this truck break down, if I get caught, if I get stuck, or I go down one of these country roads and I get lost, whatever happens... What am I going to do? Cell phone goes out. Trust me, I've been there. I've been on a route where you ain't no cell phone uh, function. I promise you that. I know I can set up a damn shelter, build me a fire until somebody come down this raggedy ass road and I might have to defend myself. <clears throat> I'm just telling you. So all my friends, you laugh, man. What the hell you got all in that bag, man? That's crazy. Is it though? Here's another thing that all my friends watching me right now, can they can attest to. Every time they had a problem, they hit me up. Hey, yo, E, what's up? Hey, where you at? Oh, man, such and such happened to me. Hold still, hold still, here I come. Whether you got hurt, I got medicine. <clears throat> you need something wrong with your truck, and the tow truck, the company tow truck talking about something, he ain't going to be there for three hours, and you got 16 hours worth of work on your truck, 
I'm, here I come. I'm on my way. What, what is your truck doing? Man, it's, it's trying to turn over, but it's like it ain't getting no gas. Here I come. Anybody. You ain't got no lunch. You ain't got no food for the day. Here I come. I could always be there for my brothers and sisters in blue when they in a jam. And all my and they know it. That's something that they're watching me right now, and I can say, and they know I ain't lying. If you ask me for it, I probably got it. <clears throat> if you need my help, I probably got something in this bag that can help you and me get home on, on at a decent hour. Okay? So, that's it, you guys. I hope I didn't want to keep this video long because I really wanted to put that dog on information out hardcore straight up information <clears throat> straight out the gate yeah I, I felt it come up you see i'm cool now probably probably old nat old fat nat <laughs> fat nat in the neck okay so everybody have a wonderful day i see y'all on hood tech 73 later on i'm gonna clean this up a little bit <clears throat> get this fire going a little bit hotter i even i'm gonna cut this buddy heater on I got one more last thing to do. One more last thing to tell you. For the people that's having the same problem with their buddy heater, because people was telling me they have the same problem. Once you get that buddy heater started, when you first hook it up, <clears throat> don't try to cut it on. Cut, hook your holes up, cut your tank on, and let it sit for about an hour. And then try to start your buddy heater. Once you start your buddy heater, run it for no less than an hour so it can burn all that weird oil that's make it hard to start. Watch. <coughs> Let that mug run for an hour. <coughs> Remember we was having all that problem the other day? Turn that boy <coughs> on start. Hold him in. Hold him for about 10 seconds. See, I don't got that problem no more. Look. <clears throat> Hold that for another good 10 seconds. Let him burn a little bit like Usher. Ease off the button. Let it sit another 10 seconds. Now, you ain't got to do all this, but I'm telling you. When it's new, you got to be a little fresh. You got to be a little, you got to take it easy. Go and pump that, pump up the volume on him. And he'll burn like that all day long. So if you got this buddy heater or any buddy heater, and y'all having problems like I was having, <clears throat> it's just it's just like a it's like a woman. You gotta take it easy. You can't come in here all hot and heavy. You gotta, you gotta, you know, <clears throat> buy it some roses. Take it to the movies. You can't just come in all like... <coughs> you can't come in like that. Sit down. Let me make you a cup of tea or something. Some coffee. Okay? Let me, let's get to know each other. Something, you know. Get to knowing each other just like this heater. Open the manual. Read it a little bit. You know, read it like some poetry. Then try to light the fire on it. You don't come in and try. It's, uh, you can't do that. All all heaters ain't like that now. Some of them is. <laughs> Some of them stay ready. <laughs> Some of them heaters stay ready. But uh, all heaters ain't like that. You gonna have you gonna have to uh, you know, conversate a little bit, play with a couple knobs, see how see where everything go, how this work. You know, like, oh, oh, you turn it this way to start it. You turn it this way for the stove, okay? Play with the knob a little bit. Just don't go in there trying to strike the fire up, man. It ain't, it ain't going to work out well for you. You can take that however you want to take that. <clears throat> I'm going to just leave that right there. So that's it. I'm going to burn this, and that's going to help bring that heat in here and dry my tin off because you do not... Put canvas away wet. <laughs>
<laughs> you gotta let that thing, you gotta let it sit up till it dried out, you know. <laughs> you gotta let that, you gotta let that thing sit up till you dry it out. You gotta be in there till you dry it out. So I'm being here for a while because it's it's a wet one. <laughs> it's it's a wet one. So I'm I'm gonna sit on in this tent. <clears throat> I'm going to hang on in here till I, I dry it out. I'm going to wear the suck out. That's what I'm going to do. So, anyway, you take that however you want to. Got to heat it up first. Um, so, you could do that part with a real heater. <clears throat> what, what, what do you mean by a real heater? I'm Everything going to be in the link, uh, Lyman 345. Uh, what was that? <laughs> see, I, I felt what you really wanted to say. Ah, uh, see, you're mining in the, in the in the in the gutter. I'm just talking. I'm just talking at you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just talking. I'm just saying. It's a lot of work to do in here. A lot of work. I got to put in some work. So I'm gonna get on off here. Y'all have a wonderful night. You see it get darker behind me. What time is? I don't even know what time it is. <clears throat> Let me let me go on here and get back to work. So everybody, everybody have have a wonderful day. All right. And please remember a few things that I said today. The reason I always say don't everything don't belong on YouTube, because I've done it. I've done it in real life. And you will spew something out, an invention, an idea, uh, even sometimes a song, a saying. Oh, didn't that girl I heard. Some girl got her song stolen. <clears throat> Some African girl. Y'all tell me if I'm wrong. Because I don't know much about the story. Some African young lady. Some European lady. Stole this African lady's song. It was either a European lady or a European man. Stole this African woman's song. That she. They made it famous. They end up putting it on a movie and all this other stuff, and the African lady ain't getting no credit. They made this either dude or that woman, whatever it was, made them famous. Anybody heard that story? So, the the actress from, I don't know, one of them t TV shows came out on one of these award shows and gave her props. Gave her props about her song. Uh, what's the name of this? What, uh, Terrence Howard. Um, what's Terrence Howard that that last movie he was on, where they was like music moguls or something? T -t 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 Taji Pinson, I think it was her name. She came, she came and gave the woman the recogni recognition that she deserved, and let everybody know that dude that everybody is putting all over social media, Empire, right? He didn't make that song. He stole it from her. Tahaji. Okay. Think about this. That dude, he made a million dollars off of singing that song. A woman, whatever. I think it was a dude. Made a million dollars off of singing that woman's song. <clears throat> he made it famous. Huh? Think about that. And nobody even know who the hell I'm talking about. The African woman, the actual woman that's singing. It's on all of these different um, short videos. Her song is the backdrop for all these short videos and skits and memes. And uh, it was a dude with long hair that stole it. Okay. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Everything don't belong on social media. Before you go doing something too slick, you better go get you some paperwork ready. I'm serious. You know, even if it don't transpire right now, you might have something in the future that'll make you rich in the future. You don't know. You don't know. <clears throat> but don't keep giving your shit away for views. And that's the thing y'all do. We all do. I ain't gonna say y'all. We give ourselves away for views instead of getting what you're really after is the bag. I don't want to be famous. 
I give me the money. I don't care about the fame. And some people wanted the opposite. I don't want to be famous. I want to be able to walk in the store. I don't would never want to be like Michael Jackson and Prince. And you can't go nowhere. And then you got photographers taking pictures of you while you're trying to wipe your butt. I don't want, I don't want that. Give me the money so I ain't gotta work again. I you know. So before you put stuff out, you know you got a good idea. You know you got a good song. You know you got a good plan. Everything don't belong on the internet. Cause all you do when you put it on the internet is give it away. You what what do you say? <clears throat> like, subscribe, share. You're sharing information. You're not patenting information. You're sharing it. When you share your information, it belongs to everybody you shared it with. It's knowledge, free knowledge. And I think where we're, we're getting mixed up is we're crossing the line between sharing information and giving away secrets. It's a big ass difference. It's a big difference between giving away secrets that could either make you rich powerful or make it so your whole family ain't got to work no more or you just giving away good knowledge that everybody should know it's a big difference ty lily give me a second okay take a break hold on i got you <clears throat> so i'm just you know i'm just letting y'all know be careful because every time i see one of them damn games i just want to pull the whole shelf down Cause they got them all kind of ways now. Checkers, chess, uh, uh, tic tac toe. Uh, what's the other one? They got them all kind of ways. Drinking games like that now. All by the same corporate, same people to change their name. Anyway, that's it, you guys. Everybody have a wonderful day. Everybody, I love you. Be safe. Stay warm. Good night. And I hope the information I gave you today helps somebody. All right, left arm is number three. I love you, and I'm out.